Hi everybody, TJ Mac Vintage Cards here. Today I'm doing a profile of the 1974 Topps Baseball set. It was a 660 card set, um, issued all in one series. They didn't break it out uh, like they did in previous years. So you can buy one pack and have the chance to get any of the 660 cards. And this is uh, the 30 cards I chose to profile for the year. Uh, again, it doesn't always include all the Hall of Famers. I do include some of the superstars of the time, you know, based on their collectability and things like that. So you'll see Rose and Garvey, just past a Dave Parker rookie, Thurman Munson, as opposed to some of the guys who more recently got in the Hall of Fame. And it's just my choice and how I choose to do the profiles. So let's jump right in. First card is Hank Aaron. I'll shift the camera over here so you can see it. And Hank Aaron was... The all-time uh, home run king, of course, in 1974, and Topps made the prediction to say, okay, we'll go ahead and uh, make a card of him uh, because we know he's going to break the record. And it turned out to be right, so that's a good thing. Uh, Jim Catfish Hunter, 25 and 12 in uh, 1974, 2.5 and 4.90 ERA. He led the league in wins and in uh, ERA. The A's won their third World Series, beating the Dodgers in five games, and they also beat the Orioles in the championship series. Johnny Bench, 129 RBIs in 1974, and 315 total bases, both led the majors. Nolan Ryan, uh, he won 22 games in 1974, um, 367 strikeouts. His 22 wins uh, was a record for an American League team for a last place uh, finish, so I don't think that'll probably ever be broken to win 22 games um, on a last place team. The major league record uh, believes belongs to Steve Carlton uh, with, when he uh, won, I think it was 27 games with the Phillies, if I'm not mistaken. And then here's uh, Phil Negro, Jim Palmer, and Rod Carew, who won the batting title in 1974. He had a, I want to say three, look at my notes here, he had a three, 64 batting average. He hit five home runs and 55 RBIs. And that's all he did for that year as far as home runs go. So he was like the quintessential singles type hitter. Just a great contact hitter. Uh, won seven batting titles in 19 years. A nice card of him look like at the batting cage. Uh, Frank Robinson. There's uh, Lou Brock who broke the Major League stolen base record for that time anyway in 1974 with 118 stolen bases. Put it in perspective, uh, Bill North of the A's led the American League with 54. So Lou Brock really stood out that year, um, stealing bases. And uh, what's interesting about him is, you know, he had a reputation for being just a humble, gentle, nice guy. And Tim Kirkagen uh, with ESPN uh, told him a story when he ran into uh, Brock at the Hall of Fame um, in Cooperstown during Hall of Fame weekend. And uh, he was talking to him about when Ricky Henderson broke his all-time record. And Brock said... That him and Henderson worked on a speech together that he would give, uh, meaning Henderson, when he broke the record. And Henderson carried it in the pocket of his uniform. Um, and then when the day came, when he actually broke the record and, and stole, I believe it was 939th base, I remember the image of Henderson uh, holding up the stolen base and then he gave the speech and everything. And what happened when he gave that speech, um, Brock was standing not too far away from him and Henderson goes, you know, Lou Brock was a great, uh, was a great uh, base stealer, but now I am the greatest of all time. And then Brock just kind of smiled at him. And then after, after the game, um, Brock pulled Henderson aside and he said to him, what happened to the speech? Why didn't you give the speech? And Ricky said, sorry, I forgot. So it kind of just shows you the, <laughs> you know, the difference in humility between Lou Brock and uh, Ricky Henderson. Henderson certainly uh, was a great player though. And then here's, uh, Tom Seaver, another uh, horizontal shot, getting real low with that back leg. He actually had almost touched the ground, I remember, when he would throw the throw the, the pitch. And he got Joe Morgan, Steve Carlton, who led the National League in strikeouts, uh, I want to believe with 249 strikeouts, I want to say, for that year. Uh, far behind Nolan Ryan's number. There's uh, Willie Stargell. Side shot of the Carlton Fisk. I love that card. Nice catcher's pose. And you got Reggie Jackson. Brooks Robinson. World Series MVP that year, Raleigh Fingers. 
The last regular issued card of Al Kaline. He did have a highlight card in the 75 set, but this would be his last regularly issued card. And then over here you got uh, the only eight I have in the set. The rest are all uh, PSA 7s. Again, I like to try to remain consistent with my grades if I decide to do a grade create a set for um, that year. I, I If I say it's going to be 8s, it's usually 8s or 9s or 8s or and 7s or, or whatnot. This is pretty much all 7s. And then here's the Willie McCovey. And this is the air card uh, where it says Washington here and then uh, National League in the bottom corner. And this is as opposed to the, uh, here's the Winfield where you see San Diego and then Padres. And the story behind that is top similar to what they did with the Hank Aaron, uh, saying he's going to be the home run king. They anticipated that the Padres were moving to Washington. Um, they actually had a buyer for the team. His name was Joseph Dinsansky, and they were set to move to Washington in 1974 and play at RFK Stadium. Uh, previously, the uh, Senators had moved to, to Texas and became the Rangers, and the plan was that the Padres were going to become a Washington team that wasn't named yet, so they just said National League on the bottom versus the actual team name. But what ended up happening is Ray Kroc, who was one of the co-owners of uh, or co-founders of McDonald's, he called Padre management to see if the team was still for sale. And Dzanski's offer was conditional, and Kroc's was unconditional. So the team was sold to Kroc and remained in San Diego. Ray Kroc, Kroc played $12 million for the team at the time, which seems like a great deal, but I read that George Steinbrenner and his group bought the Yankees the year before for $8.8 .8 million. That's even a better deal. So there were 15 cards that had the error, including the McCovey in the set. Fortunately, the Winfield did not have it. Wow, that would have been pretty crazy if it did. And it was corrected uh, fairly early in the print run, is my understanding, but um, some did get into the packs. So, I just, like I said, just imagine if that Winfield would have had the air. Wow. And then here's uh, the Cobra, Dave Parker. I just had to include him. I know he's not a Hall of Famer, but he was really one of those great players of the late 70s. Um, I would probably argue maybe the best player in baseball in like 77, 78 time frame. Just, uh, just a fabulous offensive player. He had a cannon arm in the outfield. Uh, if he didn't get into the drugs and all that, he would have been a no-brainer Hall of Famer. And then there's Carl Yaz. Love this card. Remember this card as I was a kid. I don't, I don't know, like when I was growing up um, in the early 80s and that, you'd see some of these cards get into stacks of people's cards you trade with. And you wonder always where they came from, probably like an older brother or something. And I'd always try to get these cards, even if they were commons, just because they looked different than what I had. And also when I used to go to the comic book store, you'd run into some of these cards in, in the packs or like in the boxes they had that you could sort through. So I'd always pick them up whenever I saw them. Like I said, didn't have to be Hall of Famers. Just, just wanted something different. Here's uh, the Mike Schmidt. And I think this is just a great looking card as well. Um, he led the majors that year with 36 home runs. And then Pete Rose. And this year, I think he had like 771 plate appearances. And when I did the research on this, this was like third all time still. At that time, it was a major league record. But that's been eclipsed since. I think Jimmy Rollins has the record now. There's Juan Marichal looking kind of like Satchel Page there with a real high leg kick. Really cool card. Thurman Munson. I like the Yankees, how they look that year with the uh, yellow and black lettering. I think it looks really sharp on the cards. Bob Gibson. There's your Winfield rookie. Harmon Killebrew. And we'll wrap it up with Steve Garvey. And Garvey uh, that year was the MVP of the league. I think he hit and in my notes, 312 that year with 111 RBIs, I want to say. And uh, he was a write-in to the All-Star game. I do remember that. And he won the All-Star game MVP, which I think is really cool. And I love the background here with the crowd, how you can't clearly see it. Reminds me of the 84 Donruss um, uh, card of Ryan Sandberg. I just like that image. Very sharp with like the crowd kind of blurred out. I'll just take one last gloss through. Just uh, another uh, outstanding set produced by Tops. Love these uh, these uh, vintage issues. 
Um, kind of miss putting them together. Um, a lot of these, they're a lot of fun accumulating all the cards. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I want to wish everybody a great weekend, and we'll talk again soon.